The Apple Watch can do so much more than just tell the time, buzz when you get a notification or control your music. But still, for most people, that's all it gets used for. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sahail, and in this video, I'm going to share 20 watch OS tips and tricks that will help you get the most out of your watch. We'll start off with a few settings changes, and then I'll show you how you can configure your watch to automatically change the face depending on the activity you're doing. Let's start with optimizing our notifications and reminders. One of the biggest battery drains and distractions is getting notifications on your watch from apps that you just don't need. So the first thing I like to do is jump into the watch app on my iPhone and turn off alerts for all apps except a few. The main apps I keep on are any communications apps, health apps, smart home apps, and business apps. By default, you will also see a red dot on your watch face when you get a new notification, which I think is just a little bit distracting. So to turn it off, simply toggle notifications indicator off under notifications. It keeps the watch face a lot more clean, so it feels less cluttered, especially if you've chosen to go for a really busy watch face. Now, while getting stand up and mindfulness reminders can be useful for a lot of people, I often end up ignoring them anyway. So to turn them off, jump into activity and then turn off stand reminders. Then scroll down to mindfulness and select notifications off. Okay, so now that we've minimized distractions, let's clean things up a little further. Navigating around all the apps in the grid view can be very confusing, especially when you have a whole bunch of apps that you probably never even use. Let's start by uninstalling any apps that you don't need. For me, I have apps like the Apple Store and Zoom that only really need to be on my iPhone. To further optimize performance and battery life, we can also turn off background app refresh for some apps. To do this, jump into general background app refresh and turn it off for non-essential apps. This means those apps will now only run when you're using them, which means better battery life and less unnecessary CPU activity. Once you've done that, we can now rearrange the grid to bring the most important apps into more accessible positions. To do this, tap app view and then arrangement. You can now drag the app icons around to rearrange them. The third row is the most accessible, so I usually add the phone, messages, and music app here with other apps I use frequently around them. Okay, so you may have noticed that when you do something like start playing a song, your watch immediately jumps into smart stack mode. The smart stack is easily accessible by just swiping up, so there's no real need for it to always be visible. So let's turn this off jump into smart stack and turn off auto launch live activities. Now, when a live activity starts, you will just see your watch face. While we're on the subject of the smart stack, let's customize it so we only see what we need to. Let's scroll all the way down and tap edit. First, let's remove all the widgets, then jump into widget suggestions and turn off allow widget suggestions. This ensures only our selected widgets are visible. I like to add the weather widget and maybe the world clock, but you may like to add a few more. Now, when you click the crown wheel to jump into grid view, you'll notice a small animation as the view loads. We can actually turn this off by going to accessibility and turning on reduce motion. The grid view now loads a lot faster and makes your watch feel a lot snappier. To access your apps, you of course click the crown wheel, which is easy to do with your index finger if you're right-handed, but what about if you wear a watch on your other wrist? Well, you can go into general, then watch orientation, and then click digital crown on left side. Your watch face now flips over so that you can wear your watch the other way around. A lot of people also don't know that if you double tap the digital crown, you can easily switch between apps. This saves you from searching through the grid view again if you wanna bring up another app. Now, by default, your Apple Watch screen might stay on for only a short period of time. And this can get annoying when you're interacting with your watch periodically because you then have to keep tapping the screen. You can now keep it awake for longer by going into display and brightness, then wake duration and change it to 70 seconds. Okay, so here's a big productivity win if you're in the Apple ecosystem. You can use your Apple Watch to unlock your Mac automatically without typing your password. To do this, head into system settings and touch ID and password on your Mac and enable the Apple Watch unlock feature. 
Then wear your watch and ensure that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are enabled. Now, when your Mac wakes up, it will unlock as long as your watch is nearby. Another handy feature you can use your watch for is to locate your iPhone. Jump into your control center and tap the ping iPhone button. Your iPhone will ring and your watch will even tell you how far away it is. Now, of course, most people know that you can use your Apple Watch to track your sleep. So it's worth turning on notifications for sleep apnea. By default, this is not set up. So you will need to scroll down to sleep and then set up notifications in health. Sleep tracking, of course, means that you can't charge your watch overnight, which is what most people do. If your watch is already running low on battery, there's a good chance that it may run out halfway through the night. That's why it's important to keep charging reminders turned on so that you're notified before bedtime. Now, you may have heard that your Apple Watch can detect when you fall and call emergency services for you. By default, however, this is actually turned off outside of workouts. So it's important to turn it on to ensure that it actually works. And similar to fall detection, your watch also detects when you're in a severe crash. This is one of the most important safety features on the watch. So make sure that it is enabled. Now, a really cool feature in the newer Apple Watches is double tapping. You can double tap to bring up the smart stack, or if you're within an app, like say my gym app, I can simply double tap and it will record my set. This saves me from having to put something down if I'm holding it in my other hand. You can also double tap to reply to a message or answer a call. You can customize this under gestures, double tap. Here you can change what it does during playback from play and pausing to skipping or from advancing through the widgets in your smart stack or selecting and opening the app. Finally, one of my favorite customizations is using focus mode to automatically change the watch face. Now, there's a lot of room for customization here, but essentially you can assign different watch faces to different focus modes. Different focus modes can then be triggered automatically, which gives you the ability to see the most important information on your watch depending on your activity. For example, if this is my regular watch face and I want to start a workout, when I switch into my fitness focus mode, my watch face automatically changes. You can do this for all sorts of activities like traveling, work, and so on. So there you go, 20 tips and tricks to get the most out of your Apple Watch. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.